if I had my leg amputated and then I hired a professional bougie ass chef like Gordon Ramsay to uh, cook this leg, would you take a bite? Why are you giving up your leg? How did you lose your leg? I need way more details. Hey. Hello? What's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going on? What's your name? Uh, my name's Max. Max. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a little bit of a hypothetical for you. I thought it would be interesting. Oh, sure. What's the hypothetical? So, hypothetically, I read an article on Vice one time, right? So, hypothetically, if I had my leg amputated and I got to keep it, right? And then I hired a professional, bougie-ass chef. Like Gordon Ramsay or Bobby Flay to uh, cook this leg into a burrito or something like that. Would you take a bite? Would I take a bite of your leg? Uh, I guess of anyone's leg. I don't think I have anything wrong with my leg. Okay, so so uh, a world class chef. Prepares a human leg. Not my mm-hmm. leg. Just a random leg. Would I take a bite of the leg? Mm-hmm. Uh, where did they get the I leg? I guess... Uh, of a person... you got. I guess... Okay. I guess you would have to have the leg from me because I'm hiring the guy to do it. Okay, so you're and telling me that you... Consensual. Okay, that's what it's going to ask is like, is every, if, because look, if a guy is giving up his leg, why is he giving up? Why are you giving up your leg? How did you lose your leg? I need way more details than what oh, you Oh, it already, here. it was already dead. Like, this is okay. just purely coincidental. And I'm like, okay. hey, why not get some use out of this dead leg that's severed okay. off of my body? Sure. All right. I'm going to play, I'm going to pull it like this. If I had a friend, if I had a rich friend, let's say, Lost his leg in some whatever crazy accident, um, but he got to keep it, and they couldn't put it back on. And my friend called me up, and he was like, "Lyle, listen, um, I'm I'm hiring Gordon Ramsay to make a delicious meal out of my leg, and I would like you to come to my house for dinner tonight to eat my leg with me." I a hundred percent. I would say yes, absolutely. I would eat. I would eat uh, my friend's leg with him. So I guess to answer your question, it would really depend on if I if it was a random guy's leg. I don't think I would do it, but if I knew the person, because it's an intimate thing to eat somebody, and so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, I would want to know the person. I would want to have a relationship with them before I ate their leg. I guess this is uh this is an icebreaker I like to use a lot. Oh, you and use this usually, as one of the first things oh, you bring up in time. conversation with a person? Sometimes, yeah. Especially how does like, that I don't know, how does they, that go over for you? Uh usually uh it makes me seem a little nuts, but then like if they match the crazy, you know, it's it's gonna go fine. That's brilliant. That's that's pretty smart. I would think so. All right, what about you? Would you eat the leg? Oh hell yeah, dude! I I would purely because like you're never gonna get that meat again, right? Like unless you're a fucking cannibal. And mm-hmm. some people answer this like, oh, once you eat a little bit of the leg, you're just a cannibal, and I can't get past that. Well, you I, are a cannibal. I I you're totally, you, but hold on, hold on, hold on. If you eat the leg, you're totally... I don't know if we need to put a whole label on it. I don't know if, if you as a person yeah, become yeah. a cannibal, but you are... I mean, what it really is, a cannibal, right? Is it a person who regularly so, engages in cannibalism? I don't know if, if your whole existence needs to be labeled with you're a cannibal, but you are absolutely, undeniably engaging in an act of cannibalism. But, like, it's ethical cannibalism, I think. I don't know if it's ethical as it's in, like, well, I don't know if ethical means it produces active good, but I don't think it produces active harm. 
yeah, it's more of a neutral cannibalism, I guess. It's, it is a very neutral cannibalism. That's a great way to yeah. put it. So yes, I I would engage in neutral cannibalism. I can't think of a situation in which cannibalism would produce a positive effect. Can you? Uh, maybe if your friend dies in the zombie apocalypse and you re- like out of starvation or something, and you're just stranded in the middle of nowhere and you have nothing to eat. I can see how cannibalism would have a positive effect there. Right. Or if, like, there is a dead guy in front of a door that a bunch of people are trying to get into the <laughs> place that the door leads to, and you eat the dead guy so that people can get into the door, that would that would be a positive effect for other people. So, so, so there is positive cannibalism and neutral cannibalism. Yeah, and all and also bad cannibalism. There's situations in which eating Where a person the line is? is bad too. So I'm yeah, glad that we kind of got a 360 view of cannibalism over the course of this call. Where is the line? Yes. Where does it cross into bad territory? Do you think? I think if you kill a person with the express intent of eating their dead body after you kill them, I think that is bad. Interesting. Max, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just glad you took my time on this. I was having a bad night. You made it pretty good, man. Thanks. Hey, man, listen, if you ever, um, if you ever do lose your leg and you want me to come eat your leg with you, I, I would do it. I'll give you I'll give you a call, man. Thanks for calling, Max. You got it. He said you got it, but I cut him off at the end. Hey, is this Gummy Worm? Yeah. So Gummy Worm, what's going on with you? Well this is Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Um yeah, uh I got diagnosed with a thing with my eyes. It was called retinitis pigmentosa. Um, and it's like basically going to take my vision in the next like five, 10, 15 years, somewhere in that window of time. Mm. Mm. And, uh, this has happened pretty recently. So it's just kind of given me a lot of, uh, it's given me like a new perspective on, what I should be doing with my days and my life and my future and stuff. Interesting. Interesting. What kind of perspective has it given you as to what you should be doing? Uh, I think for the most part, I think it's given me sort of this sort of this more go get them type attitude towards like, you know, getting the things I want and seeing like, going out and seeing and doing things because i used to be mm-hmm. kind of a I used to be kind of like a social like introvert kind of shut in a little bit um not really like wanting to do much and not really like wanting to go out and do things and in a sense you know in a sense i haven't it's not like i've changed completely as a person or anything like that given this new sort of thing in my life but i think now it's sort of like um I don't know. I just feel like more motivated to like go and see some stuff before I like, you know, can't. Right. Right. It's, this is interesting because, you know, I know you have a thing where you, you know that you're going to not be able to see in the next, uh, what you said, 10 years. Yeah. Somewhere like next. Yeah. Somewhere in the yeah. next five, ten, or fifteen, like fifteen ish years. Kinda of depends. And See the thing with the uh, Go ahead. Oh no, it's just like, you know, uh it's just like a weird window of time. It depends on how far it's like progressed. So it's yeah. like mine my personal my personal like condition, like status is that, you know, it's probably gonna be in like ten or fifteen years. It's interesting to me that this has motivated you and lit a fire under your ass to 
be more tenacious because we all do have a, a an expiration date. We're all going to die. We're all going to lose our sight at some point. Uh, that could be any day in the future. Uh, and this diagnosis putting a sort of more finite tangible timer on your sight has has now that it's a tangible finite thing it's it's inspired you to to move about the universe and do things yeah like i i used to like kind of put things off a lot and like say no to a lot of things like i didn't I didn't really like want to go out and do things like, you know, partying or, you know, not saying that this has like been my excuse to party it up or anything like that. But, you know, I used to just kind of feel like I wasn't gaining any sort of value out of doing those kinds of experiences. And now that, and now, like you said, now that I got this like fire under my ass a little bit and like, I have to kind of take it all in while I still can it's it's a weird thing it's kind of like now i feel i can you know sort of almost see my goals a little bit better now and start like strategizing better on what i want to do so so hit us okay these these goals these things that you want to do this this uh uh you know tenacity that you now have what what are these things well, um, I dropped out of school like two, like a year ago, a year and a half ago or something like that. I dropped out of college out of film school. I just didn't like my major and I didn't know what I was going to do. Like I just kind of decided that maybe school wasn't for me and I was just gonna, I don't know, like work a regular job and just like climb, climb the ladder that way. But now that like I have this diagnosis. I kind of want to go back to school. Like I kind of want to like yeah. get a job in something that I actually feel passionate about and like, um, and you know, maybe a job that I can probably do even after I lose my vision. So I don't know. I think I'm going to go into school and try to get my, uh, get my license to become like a, a social worker or like a psychologist or something like that. Interesting. And also so I want to you- travel. Yeah, so you've described a few things. You 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 are describing right now the way that this diagnosis has influenced you in terms of your long term vision for your life, which I find very interesting because you mentioned that, but then you were also mentioning partying, saying yes to things, just sort of in your day to day life trying to take oh, more tenacity oh, of, of what's right in front of you. And I find it interesting that both your short-term day-to-day life as well as how you're thinking about your, you know, whatever, your 10-year plan, your 5-year plan have both been affected. Oh, yeah. No, because at the end of the day, like, I still, I'm still able to see right now. And yeah. as far as I can tell, my vision will still be okay-ish for the next five ten years so i don't know it's sort of like given me this feeling of like it it, it's like i just want to see and do as many things as a seeing person can do before that time is up you know what i mean and i'm not saying that you know blind people don't like live a fulfilled life or anything like that it's just sort of like when you grow up i'm 20 years old now i've i've had my vision my whole life and so now it's like, you know, now that it's not going to be a thing anymore, it's not, you know, it's going to get taken away, essentially. I'm now sort of like forced to sort of think about the things that I haven't seen or the things that I haven't done that would be more, much more difficult to do as a blind person. Yeah. Yeah. What are those things in particular? You you know, I'm I'm, I'm happy to hear that you've, established for yourself a sustainable long-term type of plan with you know going back to school and getting your job but tell us about some crazy shit that you want to do i know it's lingering in your brain 
of like the the YOLO-y <laughs> fucking let's go to the Grand Canyon type. I don't know why I picked the Grand Canyon, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what what are these kinds of things well, that you want to go see and do and whatnot? Well, you know, as as of like the super crazy. I mean, you listed off the Grand Canyon. That is actually something that I writ, I wrote on my list. Like, I have a list that it's like you know stuff. There's like normal stuff and like going to you know visit Japan and you know going to the Grand Canyon and traveling you know traveling the United States. Um, as for like the crazy stuff, I've always kind of wanted to hitchhike somewhere or like train mm-hmm. hop. Mm, mm. Do you think you'll ever do it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like, it's kind of hard. Uh, I've kind of... Hmm. I don't know. I want to say yes, but it's like... I got... Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting to have a... Uh... A, a finite timeline that you're working with here because we think of life as so infinite as we think of time as there will always be it we think of uh yeah you know we, you know when, when you have something that you want to do that you just don't have time for right now you kind of place it in the ether of maybe i'll do it someday mm. but i mean this is very very cheesy but also extremely true. I'm finding that as as the more I think about shit, like the the cheesiest, clichéest shit, it's you know it's cliche for a reason because it's damn true. Like the whole someday yeah. is not a day thing. I mean it's true. You know if you want to actually do it, you have to do it now, or else you're not going to do it. Um, not and it's totally. interesting that you're playing with this timeline here because you know like okay if I don't do it this year and then I don't do it next year and I don't do it the year after that I don't do it the year after that I don't do it the year after that then fuck I'm not gonna be able to do it anymore yeah no exactly so as of right now I've you know I I only got diagnosed like three months ago like three Mm -hmm. months ago something like that and yeah so far I've already done like I've already done so many things that I never like thought that I would do like I like I went to uh yeah, this is a little, yeah, this is a, like about a, three months ago. I went to Hit like me. a rave for the first time. Fuck yeah. Yeah. How was that? that? How cool. was the rave? Is, like, is that something you've always wanted to do? Yeah, I've always like seen it in TV shows and stuff and thought like, oh shit, I want to do that. And then like, What's the- like I said, I never really like decided to do it for myself and then uh, I got the news that I might have this condition, and then I just sort of like pulled the trigger and was like, "Fuck yeah, I should do it." And how was the experience? It was, hard. It was low key hard. T- really, tell me why it was it hard. It was cool. It was really well. So the reason why this even came up was um, one of the side effects of my condition is that I can't like see in the dark, like literally at all. <laughs> so okay. like you know, you turn off you turn off the lights, and it's like fucking pitch black. So the only reason I was having a tough time was because, like, uh, after, like, you know, being in the crowd or whatever, you can go to the back and, like, sit in the seats. And my friends were all sitting in the seats, and I went up to take a whiz, and I came back, and it's, like, pitch black. And I just fucking, I can't find my friends or some shit like that, you know? Or, like, the flashing lights will, like, blind me temporarily. Mm -hmm. But it was so cool. It was super cool. Mm. That's awesome to hear that it was a uh, uh, a good experience for you. And, 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 and tell me, is there anything else that you've done in the past three months that you were just always kind of waiting to do, but but now you you took your opportunity to do it? This is gonna sound like kind of like I don't know. This is gonna sound definitely like smaller scale, I, you know? No, anything. Uh, but like I talk, I. I, I I find myself like talking to people a lot more and like looking at people's like faces and their features and stuff. Dude, you know what's like, okay. I'm going to, I don't know. Like it's kind of, no, I want you to finish, but I, I have a thought for you, but I, I want to hear, I want to hear you finish. Cause I find that really oh. interesting. I was like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird thing, but like before the diagnosis, I never really like looked at people when I was like mm-hmm. talking to them. I never, mm-hmm. 
like bothered to notice like oh this guy's got a scar on his eyebrow or mm. you know this person has a uh you know like a you know one color eye is one color and the other eye is another color or stuff like that you know mm-hmm. and now i'm kind of like finding myself like taking these sort of like mental notes and characteristics of people as i like talk to them or like yeah even approaching them to talk to them in the first place was something I didn't mm-hmm. really even used to do. And now I kind of find myself like wanting to do it more. Mm-hmm. 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 That's fucking awesome. The reason why I, I'm, the reason why that got me so excited is you, you said it's a small thing. That's the biggest thing. Cause you can't fucking go skydiving and see the grand Canyon and have like, you can't go on grand, amazing adventures and, every hour of every day of your life but what you're talking about just being observant really really looking at people in the fucking face when you're talking to them going out of your way to talk to people just really observing and taking mental notes of the things in front of you that's uh, you said it was a small thing it's the biggest thing it's what you're doing every single day it's what's right in front of you and you talking about actually instead of, you know, dozing off or 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 getting distracted, like really putting yourself into your conversations, into what you see on a day to day basis. I mean, that's that's incredible to hear. Oh, yeah, no, totally. Yeah, yeah I never that's really the biggest thing. I never really did that before. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. totally. Mm hmm. So just, tell me, yeah, it's just the whole. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, you please. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, like the whole, I don't know, like you said, just like the whole date, like dazing, like dozing off, not paying attention, sort of like lulling through your days without really looking at anything. Like, honest to God, I used to just like stare at my phone all the time, like riding on mm-hmm. the bus or you know, or like walking somewhere like going to work like and now now i feel so much like even with the diagnosis now i'm 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 almost thankful for like having that diagnosis a little bit or like i'm almost thankful that you know my vision is something that wasn't going to be permanent because i don't know if, if i don't know if uh i don't know if like i would have ever sort of kind of woken up from that sort of lifestyle if I had had something like this in my life. That's fascinating. That's really fascinating, man. Hmm. So, so in moments, typically when you would be looking at your phone, you know, when you're riding the bus or any sort of thing like that, are you finding yourself just looking at things? Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. I live uh, like I live in one of the most interesting like people watching places in the world. And so like I find myself just, you know, I, I ride public transportation a lot. And so I just find myself looking out the window and just watching people now so much more often. Mm-hmm. Not in like mm-hmm. any sort of weird way. I'm not staring at people or anything like that. But like I just notice things that people do now and like, mm-hmm. you know, just watch people kind of do their silly little tasks <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh I, i've done that shit before too where like i go okay i'm i i'm you know i'm also i'm addicted to my phone and i'm on it all the time and I, I sometimes i go like okay no i'm just gonna sit here and uh stare at the old lady in front of me at, at the grocery store <laughs> yes. look at like no like i literally i literally yeah. i do this i do i know exactly what you're talking about because I've, I've been trying to do it more uh where you just like you stare at the whole you're like what is this what is this woman's life like you're like listen to the way that she talks you listen to the way that the cashier responds you think about what's what 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 the cashier's totally. life is like you look at the lines on their faces and you're kind of it's really beautiful it's weird. It's like you kind of we're getting we're getting into it here, but th- you don't have to go to the fucking Grand Canyon to see some beautiful shit. It's right in front of you. You just got to notice it and pay attention and and really no, try to make an effort to see it. 
and it's 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 super nah. cool to me that even though you have this this diagnosis that's a really tough thing to digest that it's getting you more into that mindset no totally i feel so much le- like i feel so much less like internalized with my thoughts and emotions now i almost feel very like outwards and like loving yeah. towards a lot of people now yeah dude oh man that's so cool to hear that's so cool to hear um yeah that's so cool to hear man that's it. That's the big thing. It's so you presented this like I, I I got so excited when you presented it as a small thing because I I wanted to be like no dude that's the big that's the fucking biggest thing. It really is because it's a day to, it's day to day. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, it's day to day. It's, no, it is. It, it's it's uh, yeah. you know when you go when you're at your office or wherever you work at you know if you fucking work at a, a advertising agency and. Th- phoenix arizona and you go from your desk to the to the fridge in the kitchen to get a bottle of water and you say hi to a person that you know you work with you know really be there when you're saying hi to them really look at their fucking face really be in that conversation just in the in in the day to day it's 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 finding this shit in the day to day that's that's so no absolutely I'm 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 stoked to hear all that, man. That that's 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 really something. Yeah, hey, I appreciate it, Gek. Um, dude, is there anything else that uh, you wanted to talk about or or say um, before we go? It's been a real pleasure talking to you about this stuff. Hey, yeah, no, I I just appreciate it, Gek. I've been a long time fan of the show. Uh, I'm really surprised that I called in, like that I got in when I called in. And um, yeah, man, I think you're doing some amazing work here. I feel like you're probably so wise after doing so many of these now. No, I'm just a fucking guy in a gecko costume on the Call of Duty website. But I appreciate you saying that. And um, you're fucking wise, man. Uh, you're gonna learn a lot just being in the moment. You've inspired me, man, because I I think I have I've had some kicks where i've been really into the shit that you're describing of like just looking at people's faces and trying to be more observant and yeah you know how it is when you do yeah. any self-improvement thing you get on into it for a while then you kind of slip back into your ways but mm. you've you've yeah. inspired me actually i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna try to take that back up hey man i really appreciate that thanks for taking my call of course thank you gummy worm i'll see you later dog Oh man, that was awesome. That was really great. Um Good for him. Really, really good for him. I love I love that that thing. It really it really I it's, I'm not going to say anything I didn't already say on, in that call, but it really feels like that's all there is, right? I've always I've always felt like if you can't I'm just talking to myself. I'm I'm not trying to lecture people. I'm talking to myself and I, I've always thought for myself like man, if I can't find magnificent awesome spiritual beauty while I'm stone cold sober waiting in line at Ralph's, you know, staring at a <laughs> you know, looking at the person in front of me or on on the on the metro on the way to work in the morning just looking out the window at a tree that i walk by every day right if if you can't find beauty wherever it is you currently are in this very fucking moment then you're not going to be able to find it going to some tropical exotic location uh so, so I think that's really important, and uh, I thank the caller for for bringing that up. Uh, it was a really great conversation. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hi. What's going on? Oh, you know, just got done with the sesh. Say that again. 
Uh, I just got done with uh, smoking weed. Oh, okay. You were tr- yeah. you tried to you kind of tried to do a little cool guy thing there. You just got done with yeah, the sesh. Yeah. You know, just got done with the sesh. Sorry, I uh I think it's the the adrenaline, you know. Okay. Why what, what, there's somebody screaming in the back. What is so why is somebody <laughs> screaming? That's actually my cat. <laughs> His name is oh. Garth. Um Okay. Yeah, he like yells like a man, like a human okay, being. What, is he <laughs> screaming about anything in particular? Or are you? <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's a well. I actually just here. got back inside, and um, he's just really excited. He's like my he's best friend. He's afraid of you so. because you're high. The cat has a fear of <laughs> no. <marijuana>. He... <laughs> he's uh just really wanting attention and treats right now. Okay. He's a fat okay. fat cat. Okay. It's a loud cat. Well, so listen, Taylor, you said your name was, or did, did I just bring that up? You haven't told yeah, me. Yeah, it's but I know Taylor. Your name because I have a call screening thing. Whatever. Taylor, what's going on with you? How's life? Tell me everything. Tell me nothing. So basically, I, uh, I've, been, I've been struggling a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a customer at my, at my job. I work at a smoke shop, so I have a lot of crackheads come in. Oh, and okay. that's why you um, said yeah, session. I was in... Yeah, exactly. I I'm, I am one of those cool guys, you know. Okay, okay. Thank you for including me in the uh, lingo of your culture. Anyway, you had a meth person. You had somebody who was on meth. We don't need to define this person. We don't need to call them a meth head as if you know their whole life is a big, you know. But they were on meth at the time that. They were in your store. Continue. Exactly. Um, He asked me if I was an NPC. If you know what an NPC is. I do know what an NPC is. Uh, It it stands for non-player character. Yep, a non-playable character. Yes. And um, it kind of messed me up. It messed me up. Like, this happened... This happened, like... Two months ago and uh mm. it's been on my mind ever since and it, like i think about it at least twice a day mm. why did it mess you up and when you're thinking about it what kinds of thoughts are you having i just like almost realized i am that person behind the counter for a lot of people you know, and like I am that person who is doing things for people all the time and like kind of move people along. But I'm kind of like staying in the same place a majority of the time. Okay, that's And uh, this here. it's just kind of like a cycle, and it's a lot of the same people too, with like the occasional new person who's like messing up the timeline. And I'm like, whoa, what is this? But I, like, know what I'm supposed to say with most of the people that I talk to. Okay, let's unpack this. You work at a small store uh, where a select amount of local customers, recurring local customers, are the clientele. And so you find yourself in a bit of a loop where you are performing the same tasks, talking to the same people over and over and over again. And that is distressing you. Is that, is all of that accurate? Yeah. Okay. So now that you've identified that you're in this loop, what is your relationship with the loop? How do you feel about being in this loop? I have mixed feelings about it. It's like on one hand, I'm really happy like – helping people i love being the person who makes someone else happy and like makes their day like i used to be a barista i used to give people their morning coffee that's that's them starting their day and being a better person afterwards you know that's that for a lot of people Mm. and i love doing that and if i can like change that for someone i would love to but it's like i'm just doing that consistently with the same stuff over and over again and it kind of like gets exhausting, you know. Yeah. 
Do you do you get a deep sense of satisfaction when you help somebody find the perfect pickle Rick bowl? Honestly, yeah. A lot of people like it's so much Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, in all seriousness, um, tell me, do you do you desire for more? You seem to be having some kind of existential crisis over the. Uh, what is the word repetition of your life um what is there anything more in this universe with this short amount of time that you've been given on earth that you wish to pursue what 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 do cuz cuz you're having this existential crisis it, it it would seem because you feel as though there's more to your routine that rhymed unintentionally. What more do you desire? I mean, I guess I'm going to school for hair. So, like, that's something that I kind of want to do, like, maybe move up in that way. But also, that's, like, really easy to say. And I feel like most people who do hair feel that that way that's all i ever like hear anyone say but also like i don't know i want to make a difference somehow Mm. for a large group of people more so than i do for just you know the singular person out there Hmm. i have a few thoughts on that first of all with the hair thing aren't you going to just get into another loop where you now work at a hair salon and you have a recurring (laughs) group of clientele where instead of getting them Rick and Morty bongs, you're giving them Rick and Morty haircuts? <laughs> I suppose, but at least in that way I can form the clientele to where like if I want the people who are constantly changing, I can have the people who are constantly changing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's more of like an me- art form, like a hobby to me. Let me let me tell you this too. Also, if I can, the the you you have a desire to help people on a grand scale, which I think is that's a beautiful desire. I think that's a great desire. I think that's that's a wonderful, compelling force, and it'll take you to a lot of places if you follow that, and it'll take you to a lot of places that are fulfilling to you. But I think you should have a different uh, sort of relationship with the scale aspect of it, right? Because you you do feel as though you get a, a sense of satisfaction when you give somebody their morning coffee, when you help them find a piece that they really like at your smoke shop, when you give them a haircut that they are very um happy with is that accurate yes but i feel like some of them are like different forms of satisfaction like sometimes i'm happy to give a person their right bowl because i just like want them out of the store faster like sometimes it is with like malicious intent but not in a way where it's really harming anyone i guess Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, um, but like with coffee, that's a whole other story. And like with hair, okay. that's a whole other story. That's like changing an entire person's life. Well, because here's the thing about about a scale is, and I've kind of learned this. I've been trying to I, this. What I'm telling you right now is something I'm trying to learn on my own. Is um. If you can't feel really, really, and it sounds like you do, so I don't know what I'm what I'm telling you here, but I, I think feeling really, really satisfied with helping just one person is important because if you can't feel the maximum amount of satisfaction and really, really tap into. The maximum amount of satisfaction that you could possibly tap into by helping one person with one fucking insignificant thing. Then 
it doesn't matter how many people you end up helping on this so-called grand scale because it's it never is enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense actually. Like for me, I, I you know, I get fucking you know, I get e- I get emails and stuff every day of people being like the podcast has helped them. And it's 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 an interesting thing because if I were if I sit there at my email and my DM every day and I'm like more, we need let's get more and more and more people that that you know are giving me validation that I've helped them then it never be it just is never enough right but if I really right. take the time I read one fucking email and I'm like, if this is the only email I've ever, and, and I really try to think to myself, if this is the only email I've ever gotten or ever get out of doing this, that needs to be okay, right? I need to be like this. Right. I, I, I like really like, and because that feeling, that feeling won't just appear to you. You have to tap yourself into it. Of. I am satisfied having helped this one person by giving them their morning coffee. Like you you got to really tap into the one singular instance of the thing or else you're not going to be satisfied by uh, a number. You know, if one person giving them a nice haircut that they really like doesn't satisfy you then a thousand is not gonna satisfy you the nut the, it just keeps inflating does that make sense that makes a lot of sense okay good like changing the one is it just can be yeah more self satisfying yourself more than satisfying i don't know your need to help that I don't know. That makes sense. I just can't say it again. You no, just no, no, no. So, too, well, okay. So, so look. Bright. So next time, so you work. So you work at the smoke shop. Yep. So next time a guy comes in and he's like, "I want Krusty. I want Krusty the Clown," and he has his ass hanging out, and I breathe the smoke through Krusty the Clown's mouth and pack the bowl into his ass. The ne- and the next time that guy comes in and you're like, I have that in the back. Let me get it for you. And you present it to him and he smiles at you and whatnot. And you're like, oh, I've helped this guy get the thing that he came in to get. It's a really small, insignificant thing. But you sit in the moment that you're helping him with it. And you take every last drop of satisfaction you can possibly gleam from that moment. Because that satisfaction, it won't. It won't just come to you out of doing it. You have to do it, but then also mentally be there and mentally go, I'm going to fucking sit in this moment with this person as I'm helping them and get everything I possibly can out of it and lean into it. That's that's where you'll I'm feel saying, your satisfaction. Have you been to the shop? Because you're just grabbing some bowls that we definitely have there. I have spent... A decent like, amount of, of time in, in various head shops. Um, not anymore, but when I was in high school, I did I did a lot, and I and I saw wow. that uh, Krusty the Clown. Actually, if, I mean, fuck it, I have I have a Krusty the Clown bowl that is exactly like that. That's not true. I completely made a lot of this up, but I hope this <laughs> conversation was helpful to you, Taylor. It was. It it definitely like changed my outlook on on that question like i don't know how i'm gonna look at how i'm helping people in the future Mm -hmm. i'm i'm glad it was helpful to you and um i'm gonna take my own advice i'm gonna think of this call as the only one i ever take over the course of my everything really soak it up this now now i'm sounding pretentious but but i'm i don't care anymore Hey, it's your life, man. You're not Thanks, an NPC. Man. Neither are you, goddammit. Taylor, is there anything else you want to say <laughs> to the people of the computer before we go? 
Uh, don't do drugs unless you're 21. Perfect. Thanks for calling. Yeah, have a good night. Hello? Hey, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, is this Sal? Yes. Is this Lyle? Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, you, up, you, has anyone ever told you that you, you totally sound like your name is Sal? Yeah, I mean, it's close. Ish. Are you Italian? I don't know if that's cool to ask. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, I am. Um, but my name is definitely not Sal. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, you picked a great fake name. Yeah, thanks, buddy. How's, how's everything uh, going for you, man? It, Sal, how's everything going with you? It says here that uh, you have a fart fetish that is a massive secret in your life. It, and you've it, never it, indulged in it before. That's very diff- yeah, it, it's difficult to talk about, but I feel like I, I need to learn a little bit more about how to approach this. If that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, I just feel like it's it's a difficult thing to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's not something I'm definitely proud of. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel so, weird about it, but it's... So, Sal, um, listen, I, I, I have to ask you this question. Uh, it's sort of just a formality here, but um, you're you're being 100% serious, correct? You, um, I don't think you would fuck with me, but... Uh, you you, you... Can check my search history. <laughs> Check the search history on okay. my computer. Yeah. Um, you you watch a lot of fart weird, porn, man. I wouldn't say a lot, but when I do watch porn, I do happen to go towards that category. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. How long have you been into farts? See, here's the thing: it's not so much farts. It's like this is where it gets weird, man. I. I I'm on board. It's like, it's like the forbidden fruit. Like, girls don't fart. You know? And, like, dude, bring it on. Like, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's not even a fart. Maybe it's just, like, the... the What would you call that? The, the... Like the... You know, like the boundary line. You know, like, that's where, like... I, I don't know. It's very, it's very confusing to me myself. Well, you know the way that you're explaining it that that you, uh, it, it's kind of a forbidden fruit thing, you know, like, yeah. you know, girls are not typically very open about flatulence, about pooping, about these sorts of exactly. things, and it's it's a forbidden, it's a forbidden thing. It's a very taboo thing, yeah. and for many people, yeah. uh, you know, taboos can be very, uh, you know, exciting to explore. Yeah. Um, so but here's where it gets. Also, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Wait, tell me. Tell me more. No, I was just gonna say like it, it's weird because like I'm not. I, I would never kink shame anybody on planet Earth for anything that they they indulge in or they want to indulge in. But I still hold myself to. This is so weird. I hold myself to a high standard because I don't have a foot fetish, let alone. Nothing else weird like that, but like, not weird, nothing like that, but like, here I am wanting to sniff a girl's ass. Like, I mean, I'm demented. I gotta be. Why do you consider yourself demented? Because it's so gross. Like, if you told, like, in my mind, I picture myself, like, if I told the prettiest girl, like, hey, fart in my face. Like, they're just going to look at me like, what? Like, eh, I'm not going to say, like, the curse words, but, like, there, there's going to be a ton of them. Like, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so I, I feel embarrassed. I feel very ashamed of this, you mm-hmm. know, and it, it's very tough for me to uh, digest, like, that this is my kink. Like, it, it's very, it's very, uh, it's kind of frustrating. Like, I, I'm mad uh-huh. at myself for liking this. But I've never experienced it, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've never had that happen to me. 
I mean, let's boil down the shame here, Sal. You say it's gross. You let say it's shameful, it. but 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 why? Like, let's let's ask let's ask why. Why is it shameful for you to like farts? Just because a lot of other people back. think that it's gross? No. Yeah, you nailed it. I think it, we circle back to that taboo part of it. It's so taboo, and it's so like not talked about yet. Like we just got into feet, like in you know the this century. Like we just got into yeah. the feet. We accepted that, you know. Like it's taking a long time to get. Uh, I'll probably be dead by the time like people accept that this is a fetish. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sal, I, I actually feel like think we're I think on such a slow pace. Sal, this is a uh, you know, Sal. In order for you to be self-actualized, in order for you to really achieve happiness on your own terms, you you need to transcend society. By myself. And yeah, I think you need to transcend society. I think that society has these rules. Some of them are for a good reason. You know, don't kill people, don't steal course, things, whatever yeah, it is. No, no harm, um, nobody gets hurt, of course. But in this situation, you know, this is not a harmful thing that society is trying to prevent. This is just, you You need to transcend society's views on things and live your life for yourself, Sal, and not that. get so hung that. up. On what other people are doing, you're never going to be happy if you're living by other people's rules. Um, of course. And I understand why. I understand why it's embarrassing, right? But Very. there's so much power to be had in owning what is traditionally embarrassing, right? Because if society tries to shame yeah. you and tries to make you feel uncomfortable for liking what you like, um, you know, you can take the power back and not and not let it, uh, uh, you know, not let it control you. Uh, tell me 100%. this. Tell me this. Sure. Have you ever considered going out there trying to find uh, or trying to orchestrate a uh, a sexual experience that involves farts in that in that ballpark? Yeah, yeah, in I that agree. ballpark. Um, so, Gek, let's let's get real. Yeah, um, I have looked into it. It's expensive because it's not something I would do to like a random girl at a bar. You understand? Like, mm-hmm. I have looked online in people in this field, and it's just out of my ballpark. Sure, and uh, that that's where it is. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I want it to be genuine. I don't want it to be someone else that's just, you know, excuse my language, but just farting in faces all day. Yeah, I kind of want it to be a little genuine. Okay. You know? Sal, I have another recommendation for you. Have you ever been on, um, I mean, there's all these websites out there. Uh, I, I don't know any off the top of my head, but there are many, many websites for uh, people whose uh, sexual desires deviate from the norm, uh, who, yeah. who you know congregate together to find one another. It's never been easier, actually, for uh, people with it's deviant sexual Reddit. desires to... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, Reddit is one. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure there's all these dating sites where people can, you know, explore their fetishes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like, Sa- Sal, I feel like... I feel like there is still a lot of inhibition on your part that is keeping is. you from fully diving into this thing about yourself. And I, 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 I think like, that look. you should accept it. Because I, I, I don't know. I'm not... You know, this is an interesting thing. I, and I'm not sure about it. I would love to talk to a real psychologist about it. But I don't Me know too. if you can make this go away. Have you talked yeah, to someone I don't about think this? It's going anywhere? I don't know no, if you I'm can just make this go away. I'm too embarrassed. I mean, why embarrassed? This is what I love to. I, I, first, gang, I, I just want to thank your team that you had answering the phones because I tried calling a couple weeks ago about this and we had got disconnected. But I had talked to one of the gentlemen that picked up the phone and we talked about it like this, and 
we had a good laugh about it. That was the first time I ever opened up about it. You have no idea. Like, this is uncomfortable for me, you know? And you have a great team. Really appreciate it. But he also told me something cool. He was like, you're not the first person calling about this. So there's other people out there with this. We're Fuck yeah, there's it, other like, people. You know, yeah, like, of course there's other people. Every yeah. weird thing you could possibly think is some unique thing to you. It's every, you know... We all live, uh, we, we all really share helped. this weird thing yeah. in our brains that uh, yeah. causes us to like farts and, you know, weird stuff. Fucking like that. be you depressed know, and all that like, shit. Armpit hairs and whatever. Yeah, whatever you got. Like, that's why, you know, man, this, you have such an awesome thing going, man. You have no idea how much, like, I appreciate you having this, like, open forum. I appreciate that, Sal. You have Sal. no idea what my face looks like, but, like, this feels so good to get off my chest. Like, No, I don't know what uh, it looks like, but no. I know that it loves itself some stinky farts. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, Sal, listen, I, I'll say this. I hope that you talking about this on uh, this podcast has, um, you know, gotten you at least, like, one ring up, one rung up on the ladder to uh, eventually either um you know embracing it or talking to someone about how it can go away i don't know i really like it, it, it's interesting when we're talking about like it going away i do yeah. i don't know to what degree humans can like change Achieve. their psychology of like what they are yeah. sexually attracted to yeah. Uh, and then I don't know what the healthy thing is if it's to pursue it or I I don't I don't know I wish I had the answers of like of this I, shit know, from a psychology. Yeah. yeah. The scary thing is, what if? And then here's just a what if I'm thrown out there. What if some chick farts in my face? I fall in love with this. Now I'm into the next realm. I don't know where that goes deeper. I, what are they doing? Pooping on my chest? Like, I, where does this go? If I like it. That's the mm -hmm. scary part. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, know, look, man, man I, look, man, look, look, man. Let's if you let's let's say, let's say let's say a girl is farting on your face, and then let's say uh -huh. you know that slowly becomes not enough for you. And then she's shitting in your chest. And then she's shitting in your mouth, and then oh, yeah, she's like shitting of. in your ass while you are taking a shit, and your shits are like sumo wrestling each other inside of your assholes. Let's say you do get to that point. What? Chase is really so bad that. about that. What is really so bad about that, Sal? Nothing except the embarrassment. It, it, it all comes... I, you're right, Gek. It comes down to my own insecurities. Like, I have to find that power, but I just don't have it. I mean, you know, like, this... I, I'm a... I like to think of myself as a, a pretty good guy, you know? But, like, you know... There were things in my past where I did drugs and this and that. Like, and it, it's taking time to build my ego up, and, and it's very hard to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm clean yeah. now, and I got this weird fetish. I don't know what I would want more, like the drugs or the fetish. But I kind of—I don't know. I like being clean, so I'll take the fetish. Mm -hmm. Sal, um, if I'm rambling, I, I, man, tell me. No, listen. Here's what I, I I I think I said this before, but I'll just say it again, just to hammer it in. Um, Sal, I think for you to really be happy, you can't be living by other people's expectations, by society's expectations. And I hope you take that to heart. And I hope that you uh, move forward in a direction that uh, you know is is overcoming those expectations and leads to you more living your own life. Gek, you're an, you're an amazing Gek. You have no idea, man. You're, you're saving lives without even knowing it. Uh, I wish you many farts to the face. Uh, I wish you many guilt-free farts to the face and uh, shits to the <laughs> mouth and uh, pisses to the no, nose if you get there. there. And um, I appreciate it. Uh, Sal, yet. is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah, guys. Um, Just call Gek. Be open with yourself. Get this off your chest. The guy's here for real. And the team's awesome, too. 
Thank you for calling, Sal. Get farted on. You know, there's also... Sal, for, for, for every guy out there who loves getting farted on, there's a woman out there who absolutely loves farting on guys' faces. And there's an alternate universe where I'm getting a call from a lady who's like, you know, hey, Gak, I, uh, I have this thing where I, I love to fart on guys' faces, but I, just, I can't find any guys, you know, who I'm willing to bring it up to. Like, what if Sal, I'm going to call this, what's, a, what's an equally Italian name? Uh, Maria. Sal and Maria. What if Ma- uh, Maria calls me? And she's like, Gek, I can't find a guy who this face I can fart on. Let's say Maria and Sal, they meet on Hinge, some normie dating app. And, um, you know, both uh, Maria wants to fart on Sal's face. Sal wants Maria to fart on his face. But both of them are too embarrassed to let each other know. And so they hide it and they hide it. And they, they never are, are, are true to each other. And, um... The amazing fart sex that could be never bees. Wouldn't that be tragic?